Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of this historical constitutional amendment, House Bill 1234. The current number of 203 House members is the result of the work of the delegates at the 1967-1968 Pennsylvania Constitutional Convention. With all due respect, the number 203 does not possess any intrinsic value in a legislative context, although given that it's an odd number, it does avoid a tie vote. The fact of the matter is, it was significantly debated in the 67-68 convention as to whether or not there should have been a different size for the House of Representatives. And in fact, many members did make the argument of that constitutional convention, the delegates that is, uh, that it should have been smaller. Um, on January 22nd of 1968, committee proposal number one was introduced and um, it contained the directive for 203 House districts upon introduction, but a number of amendments were offered and arguments made to change that number. In the end, that convention kept it, but the fact of the matter is that does not mean that this constitutional issue should not be readdressed. I want to read this one quote from Delegate Michael on February 5th of 1968, making several points in favor of reducing the size. Quote, in 1873, when the Constitutional Convention last met, they set the House number at 200. In 1870, the population of Pennsylvania was about 3.5 million. Today, we are talking about approximately 60,000 voters per representative. Yet, can you say with me today that our representatives have less communication with the voters than they had back in 1873? Remember, Alexander Graham Bell did not invent the telephone until 1876, and Henry Ford had not constructed his first automobile until well after 1900. And remember, this quote is in 1968. Today, we can call any place in the Commonwealth within a few minutes. There are over 100,000 miles of roads in Pennsylvania, Communication and transportation are completely different from the times as we look back to 1873. In 25 more years, what kind of communication and transportation are we going to have? In other words, this idea of numbers, a magic ratio, say, of 60,000 voters to one representative, just is not significant today when we look at the changes that are coming about in transportation and communication. What we have to look at is how this legislature is going to work and whether it should be a smaller body would do the job or not. I think that delegate was quite prescient. Here we are today with the vast improvements in transportation and communications, and the constitutional amendment, while historic, is also common sense. At 153 House districts and our current population of 12,700,000 people, we are talking about 83,000 people per district. With all due respect, this is not a significant change from the 62,500 given today's size of the legislature. And the most important thing is, is that the ratio of representation between urban and suburban and rural areas will really remain equivalent. All areas would lose numbers of representatives, but not proportional representation. Keep in mind, there is one person, one vote constitutional requirement. The fact of the matter is, we can be a more representative body with 153 members, I believe, than with a total of 203. This is a historic constitutional amendment. It deserves this type of debate, I applaud the speaker who runs the entire chamber, not just for one party or the other, but for the entire chamber, and is the person who would best be in the position to understand the need for this change. And I applaud the speaker for moving this historical piece of legislation. 
I would just say this. Over the last three years, this body, in a bipartisan manner, has been nothing but effective and efficient and has, in fact, addressed significant issues across the board, from privatization to property tax relief to charter and cyber charter school reform to transportation funding to improving the lives for those with intellectual disabilities to balancing budgets to holding the line on taxes to reducing debt Week after week after week, this body tackles important issues, and we find bipartisan coalitions to pass those legislation and send it to the Senate. This is not about the effectiveness or the efficiency of the body or about each and every individual. It's about moving Pennsylvania and its representation into the 21st century, given the changes in communication, technology, and transportation. Again, I applaud the Speaker of the House, and I think that this historical debate will continue. Remember that on any constitutional change, the voters of Pennsylvania, in a referendum, have the last say. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.